Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's presentation. Today is day two of the Mega Futures 101. Peter, <laughs> okay. This webinar is recorded, and you guys are going to receive the recording later on uh, today. Keep in mind that for tomorrow's live trading session from 9 o'clock until 4 p.m. Eastern, you need to register. So there's a separate registration link. So for the, uh, for uh, if you have registered for these two days, and if you're here, this will expire at the end of the trade uh, at the end of the session today. You need to re-register for uh, for tomorrow's event separately. I will be sending you tonight all the instructions, so you don't need to worry about that. So welcome to day two, guys. Uh, trading futures with a minimal capital and low risk. This is what's gonna, going to be our focus for today. And I'm going to give you some great examples how we traded the Dow and we caught a mega run to the upside today. In fact, we only did uh, this. Uh, actually, this month we only had about five trades. And I'm going to share with you the results with what we traded, et cetera, et cetera. DDD, we cannot recap yesterday, but you do have the recording. Uh, yes, there is a recording for day one, and the recording was set, what was already sent. But I will send you day one and day two again today. Make sure, guys, that you are on our list. And if you do not receive it, please email me, because probably you have accidentally unsubscribed from us from a pre previous uh, correspondence. And uh, all right. Okay, Alex, you need to share. Uh, uh, you need to share. Uh, uh, to share your uh, your excitement with us here. <laughs> Send us a picture. All right, guys. So my name is Anka Metcalf, and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutloud.com. I've been featured, and I also uh, collaborate with a lot of uh, uh, magazines like Active Trader, Stock and Commodities, Benzinga, Your Trading Edge, Cranes Detroit Business, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Traders Expo. I'm invited to a lot of Traders Expo, to the money shows, to present Yahoo Finance, yada yada yada. All right. I have been a professional independent trader for the last 16 years. My focus is day trading futures and swing trading futures, but also swing trading stocks. I have an addiction to stocks and I love trading stocks and I simply cannot uh, step away from stocks. For instance, yesterday, speaking about instant gratification, this is what my members love, instant gratification. And the, the reality is this, this is my preferred, my preferred method of, uh, uh, you know, of trading is when uh, I'm getting instant, instantly gratified for my trades. We had a trade in Boeing yesterday. Now, I, I know this is a little bit off topic, uh, exactly. Uh, this is a little bit off topic, but we had a trade yesterday in Boeing. I called Boeing at $366 for a long. Today, we locked in everything except a quarter of the trade, and the trade is still going. It's trading over uh, $380. Uh, and by the way, Boeing is the only swing trade that we took this month. So I am not um, an aggressive trader. I just wait until the momentum is there and everything is all kind of said and done and uh, everything, I need everything all set up before I take the trade. So I don't take a lot of trades, but my results speak from this for themselves. So I have been doing this, guys, for the last 16 years on a professional level, which means that I've been trading from my house from the, uh, in the last 16 years. Uh, prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. So I do have finance background. I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com, which is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade and swing trade the futures and the equities market. I've also, uh, I have also traded Forex for a very long time. In fact, I started my career in Forex and I actually gave up Forex and trading Forex about uh, five years ago because I switched everything to futures. And now if I want to trade a currency or a currency pair, I trade it uh, through, the, uh, through the futures route. 
I'm also the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system. The reason why I'm saying I'm the designer is because I cannot take credit for it. I did not invent it. I had to reapply what I have learned on the institutional level while I was spending my years in investment banking and prop trading, and I had to apply it to my retail account size. And you can imagine that my retail account size was not uh, you know, uh, I didn't have millions and millions in my account where I can manage it uh, in a certain way as you do a prop trading account. So uh, my methodology is based on price support resistance, but there's so much more than meets the eye because I focus on eight layers of price support resistance and that's why my trades are so accurate. And when I'm getting a trigger in my trade, my trade immediately starts rocking to the upside or to the downside, depending on the trend and depending on the direction the trade is taken. I also have a specific trigger time throughout the day. So some of my preferred trigger times are in the morning at 10.30. Uh, 10.30 is uh, my prime time trigger time. And then uh, I have a secondary, uh, a secondary uh, uh, proprietary trigger time in the afternoon, and that is around 2.30 p.m. Eastern. So I don't take a lot of trades. Uh, if I don't have a trade that is setting up around 10.30 or going into 11 o'clock, I lose interest in the market. If the market lacks momentum, I kind of step away. I look through stocks. I scan. I read through news or uh, what we can expect in the market the next day or the following week. So I'm losing interest in the market. I'm just letting it do its thing because if it didn't line up with my strategy at my precise location, then I have no interest uh, if, it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't react into my prime time trigger time. And then in the afternoon trading session, um, I'm um, so I take two hours off every single day from 12 o'clock to two o'clock. I enjoy my lunch. I go for a walk. I even do some grocery shopping. For instance, today I went to the farmer's market uh, and back. So I don't want to sit in front of the computer. Uh, then when I come back, I get very serious about the market. At two o'clock, I do a little bit of market uh, recap of what happened in the, after, uh, in the, in the morning. And I uh, recap the levels, I see what the new parameters are for the trades, if the trades still have room for the upside or the downside, or if retracements are in play that day. And uh, that is pretty much, uh, these are my two prime time, uh, prime time trigger times, the uh, 10.30 a.m. and the 2.30 p.m. And then I have another preferred time to trade, and that is at the end of the day where you pretty much have a ramp. Uh, usually, and typically it's after 3.30, and that is the 3.30, uh, 3, 3.30 trigger, and there were studies that were made, and uh, there, are, there are a lot of algorithms that trigger around that time. And uh, I'm not going to get deep into it. This is something that I shared with the room uh, and uh, um, a little while ago. But anyway, so please know it's the last 30 minutes. Absolutely, Lynn. The last 30 minutes is just absolutely on fire, but it's not always on fire. So if you have a dormant market, uh, the reaction, uh, you're not likely going to have a reaction until the end of the day. But if you're having a trending market, it's just going to propel higher. And this is because a lot of traders are uh, trying to fade uh, the move. There are a lot of counter trend traders out there. This is the way they were educated to short into resistance. And now if you buy into resistance, you're going to, you have the upper hand into these trades and you have to know, um, a little bit about, uh, some set a, a little bit about, um, uh, about some, uh, setups that may form into resistance for you to take the, uh, to take the trade higher. What, what, once, uh, what once was a novice uh, back in the day with, where you would short into resistance, right now is the new norm, so you basically buy into resistance. And that resistance is the confirmation that the, uh, that the price is, tr uh, is going to propel higher, and today was no exception. I'm also uh, paying attention to specific price zones. There are four specific price zones, institutional price zones, where algorithm, where algos are likely to uh, take initiate a trade, whether to the long side or to the short side. And these four price points, on the, uh, especially in the futures indices, but they work for commodities as well, like gold and oil. Um, uh, not necessarily for, they don't really work for sugar or corn or soybeans or lean hogs or uh, lumber, what have you. So they don't work for the, those types of trades. Th those are trading on different kind of parameters. But if you're an active trader into the indices, into the uh, U.S. Uh, stock indices and into golden oil, they work. They work for RBOB, uh, uh, RB, which is gasoline. They work for heating oil. 
They work for natural gas, so they work for a variety of commodities, but not for all. Uh, these are price points, like I was uh, saying, where uh, you're getting the price trigger uh, and you're getting a, a quick impulse continuation either to the upside or to the downside. And these levels also represent huge targets. Uh, and that is when the pullbacks are, uh, are coming in. So unless you have been in contact with an institutional trader, this is the best kept secret. Uh, and I'm very fortunate to share this with my students. I'm also, um, I also analyze chart synchronicity and divergency. And this is something a little bit different than what you guys may be used to chart synchronicity and divergency. Uh, I look amongst the four indices uh, for the index that has the relative strength uh, and then the relative weakness. And then I try to categorize, the, uh, I categorize them into leader and, and laggard. And uh, according to that, uh, to that segment, whether it's a leader, I look at the lagger, and if the lagger has a chart structure that is more prone to a pullback, uh, then it's going, even, even the strongest indices, are, or even if you have like two or three indices, uh, let's say you have the, a strong Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ, but if you're having a, a weak Russell, uh, they're pretty much going to, Russell is pretty much going to damp uh, the price action down from these, uh, from these other indices. So uh, to me, trading futures, uh, I, uh, in trading futures, I don't have a favorite. So when I come into the trading day and say, hey, all right, so I have these four indices that are my bread and butter, and this is what I trade every single day uh, from a day trading perspective, the m &E Dow, the m and &E S&P. Uh, and I trade the Imini NASDAQ and Imini Russell. Obviously, you can trade all of these Iminis right now with micros. We had a discussion yesterday about micros, and today I'm going to teach you how to scale in and scale out using these micros. So it's a 100% complete, complete workshop. There's going to be no flaw for anything like that. Um, and make sure you take notes. This session is also recorded, so you can actually review it after uh, you receive your recording, and you're going to have it forever. So. Um, you have unlimited access to it. So basically, uh, I look at the structure of the chart and I look at the chart that has the, the capability to run faster to target than the rest of the indices. So I don't have a favorite per se. I'm not coming into the market and saying, hey, I'm only trading the M&E S&P. No, because sometimes the M&E S&P may lag. For instance, next, and we talked about this uh, yesterday at the beginning of the trading session where NASDAQ is going to tend to outperform any kind of index going into the end of September where the S&P 500 tends to damp down its price action into the end of September. So uh, keep in mind that we're almost approaching mid-month. We have a lot going on this month. Uh, don't forget that uh, the contract is going to roll this Friday in the futures indices. And that's why you saw uh, really light volume uh, into the futures indices. Not a lot of commitment on Monday, Tuesday. Today, we have a full day, full throttle projection higher. Uh, and if you had not been in the trade earlier on, like we have in the trading rooms uh, uh, since Monday, you wouldn't have benefited from this uh, big projection to the upside. Uh, there is still room for a projection higher, and there's still a, a lot of room for higher. And there is a good news because if we start taking out the highs, and that is the monthly high of the, the uh, actually the ranges, the range highs, and I mean uh, the monthly highs, the weekly highs, then we were uh, then we are going to start to trade into an easier easier pattern, and the price is going to get sucked up into the projected areas. So again, coming into the trading session, I evaluate all the indices based on uh, relative strength and relative uh, weakness, uh, based on chart synchronicity and divergency, and also based on chart structure. Chart structure is very important for me. All right, so uh, I'm going to talk about why futures uh, today. I'm going to talk about time frames. What are the time frames that are providing me an income every single day almost into the market? if not on a day-to-day -day basis, because not all my days are, uh, are positive. I mean, I have down days. Uh, I stop out of trades. I stop out of day trades. I mean, there's no surprise. There is not one perfect machinery, and there is a holy grail out there that is going to provide you with a perfect trading system where you're going to have consistency day in, day out, day in, day out. So again, it's going to be 
Uh, it's going to be, you're going to win one day, two days, three days. Maybe you're going to have a winning streak of about a week or so. And then you're going to have some trades where uh, that are not going to work. It truly depends on the market environment. It's uh, uh, related very much to the economic environment that, uh, and the releases that are, uh, that are coming out. Uh, every week, the tweets that are coming out, unforeseen events, et cetera, et cetera. So I will share with you day trading for me is my income uh, producing style of trading and I'm using swing trading for my wealth generation. Uh, today, I'm also going to be teaching you how to scale in and scale out of trades and also my scanning process. All right. So I told you, already told you a little bit about the scanning process and uh, um how I select my trade, but we're going to go a little bit uh, into depth of how I select my, how I select my, how I select my trades. Obviously, some of these are some of the advantages of trading futures. We tapped onto this subject a little bit into yesterday's trade, into yesterday's session. I'm just used to saying trading session with my members. But uh, so when you're trading stocks, you need a little bit larger account size. Uh, you are required to have about 20 about 25, your minimum requirement is about $25,000 to open a trading account uh, with uh, any kind of broker out there. Uh, if you're swing trading, obviously you need a little bit less, but today we're going to be focusing on day trading. So uh, you need about $25,000 plus, I would say you need a, at least another cushion of about $5,000 because if you go below two, if you go below once, if you go once and below that $25,000, uh, your day trading status is erased, so you cannot execute day trades anymore. Uh, you need large position moves, so you basically need to, a dollar moves in order to uh, for you to make uh, some money. And plus, you're going to need more money because your buying power has to be high. It requires, uh, if you want to trade 100 shares of, uh, let's say, of the Qs, uh, and uh, if you have, if, if you would be required to have uh, over $10,000. And uh, if the queues are moving a dollar up, let's say you're gonna make a hundred bucks. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about futures right now, right? But in stocks, you know, you're gonna have a lot of uh, a lot of charts. Uh, I find that throughout the years, the only uh, help that I had was from my scanner because uh, the scanner is the most re reliable, uh, reliable software. I use trade ideas. It's no surprise. I'm, I mean, many of you guys already know I have been using, I have been one of the first users of trade idea scanner since it first came out. So I'm very proud of that. And I trade ideas has records to demonstrate that. And even when I log into the account, you could see the date when I actually signed up for trade ideas. Uh, I'm a true believer that you can become a proficient independent trader without any outside help. And this is my goal to create self-sufficient traders that are not going to be depending, uh, dependent on me or any other signal service or trading room along the way, uh, because I want to teach traders how to trade the right way because I'm a trader. I was very fortunate to receive, uh, 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 so much training and information was literally drilled into my head for years. And I was very fortunate uh, to have that experience. And uh, I, I'm really happy to share everything with you guys. So that's one of the reasons why I have a, a, a trading class based on trading futures. I didn't have this at the inception of, uh, of Trade Out Loud back in 2011. We have been around for almost nine, year, nine years now. Um, and, uh, eight years. Okay. Eight, eight, nine, not eight years now. Uh, and, uh, the way I started was, uh, basically I was sharing, um, do I use a premium version of trade ideas? I use, you know what? I use the same version that I used uh, that I used and I still have the links for that. So, um, I've been using the same, uh, and I'm going to share a little bit of information with that, with you, Robert. Um, uh, I have some setups that I'm looking for in stocks and I'm looking for 16 minute, 60 minute buy setups. I'm looking for a 60 minute sell setup. So I'm looking at, uh, either side of the tape. I'm looking for new all time highs, new all time lows. I'm looking for base breakouts and base breakdowns on a 15 minute level, on a 30 minute level, on a 60 minute level, and on a daily level. Uh, and I'm also looking for power trends. These are on the two minute, even though I'm not trading stocks 
uh, on the two minute time frame because I'm swing trading stocks. I like to look at these. And also I have a scanner for climactic trades, climactic to the upside, climactic to the downside. And these are my system. And once you learn how to trade, you can apply all this. Now, remember, you can use a scanner, uh, but if you're really new to trading, if you're very new to trading stocks, I truly suggest that you step away from the scanner and uh, compile yourself a list of about 25 stocks or 50 stocks that are ranged between, let's say, $10 and about $80 or so, and try to navigate the market with those uh, uh, with those stocks. So don't extend too much because it's, it can be really overwhelming. Uh, I don't scan on the Think or Swim platform. Okay, so futures, futures definitely you need a uh, you can open an account with a smaller uh, with a smaller account size, right? A lot of traders gravitate towards the futures market because you can open an account with as little as five thousand dollars. But there's great news there. Uh, I have communicated with you guys uh, that were uh, with me last night. Uh, and we have just partnered with TradeStation. Now, I have used TradeStation for, uh, in the past for many years, but uh, I have navigated uh, into the Think or Swim platform because of the charting, but they have done so many changes to the platform, and now it's so competitive that I'm going to switch back. This is a brand new, uh, brand new agreement that we have with them. Uh, and you will receive uh, more information in the email. I don't want to waste your time here, but uh, all in all, what I wanted to say is that you can open an account, especially if you want to trade micros, with as little as, guess what, $500. And as long as you have the margin requirement to trade the index or the commodity, uh, you are free to trade it. Very competitive pricing. Uh, micros are going to be... Um, about a dollar round trip, so 50 cents per side. Stocks are gonna be $5, and uh, Trade Out Loud members have special incentives and rebates. Uh, you're gonna get about $1,000 in rebates off, so I'm gonna send you guys the link after today's presentation. Futures has great leverage. Whether you're trading the overnight trading session, there are so many traders that are flocking into uh, the futures market. Uh, one of the things that is very interesting and uh, the reason why I have decided to open up more about the futures market, and I did that in uh, starting with 2016, with the summer of 2016, is because in 2015, um, in December of 2015, uh, JP Morgan and Goldman, uh, Gold, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs and Wells Fargo allocated more traders to the futures desk. So they took traders from, uh, from the, st from the stock trading desk and allocated them to the futures desk. So I know that there was something up with that and the volume increased substantially once they have done that. And we saw that in 2016, uh, after election, when the market started to propel higher and we noticed like an increase in volume in the futures market, which is substantial, which was not the norm of the overnight trading session because, uh, during the, uh, during the overnight trading session, the Asian session and the London session, the volume was not as high. But uh, now it has increased substantially since then. Uh, you get smaller position moves. So you could actually take advantage of the market volatility, which was a big no-no to trade for smaller account sizes. And that's one of the reasons why many traders have blown up their accounts in uh, uh, last year when we had the volatility in 2018 because they didn't know how to measure exactly the risk level for their trades and they eyeballed where their stop was gonna be and they didn't realize that that was actually a two to 300 point if you're trading the Dow and it was actually a 25 to 30 point stop if you were trading a one minute or a two minute chart in the m and &P, which was insane. Uh, I had a lot of days where I literally, uh, you know, uh, uh, sat on my hands, I didn't do anything then and I navigated the market in a safe manner. You can look at our performance portfolio if you go to our website, which is tradeoutloud.com. I'm sorry guys, I can't type it for you in the room. I have an injured hand, so I have to work with one hand. I have eight stitches on one finger, so I almost, almost cut my finger off completely. I accidentally, uh, 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 accidentally kind of jammed my finger into a workout equipment and I couldn't get it out and it was like blood gushing everywhere. It was just a horrible scene. I rushed to the emergency room. It was, it, it was not pretty. So um, the, if you go to our website, it is tradeoutloud.com. You could go uh, to, our, to our trading room tab and if you click on it, you're gonna have a little drop down window and it's gonna say performance portfolio and I think it's the second, uh, second line down. You can click on that and that's where we have our portfolio performance, 100% transparency in our trades, the good, the bad, and the ugly, everything is there with our current performance. 
So you have minimal charts. This is what I like because when I'm trading futures, I wanted to simplify my life. Uh, I wanted to simplify the way that I look at charts and I'm getting this with the futures market. I don't want to put in the hard work to day trade stocks. I don't want to pay attention to earnings. I don't want to pay attention to gap ups, to gap downs. Uh, I don't want to do the extra work in the morning. When, uh, when I was uh, executing day trades, uh, in stocks, uh, I would have to prepare for about an hour and a half to two hours. Now I only prepare for less than 30 minutes. So I could be ready in 10 minutes before the market opens. Uh, I price in, uh, I price in my levels, my, uh, my key levels in the market, and then I trade off of those and then I'm fine. So minimal work, right? So you're more relaxed. You can, uh, we actually can chat in the trading room. So, uh, we keep it very professional though. And we don't talk about anything else other than trading. If you have a trading question, you know, obviously you're going to get your trading question questions, answers, uh, answered. Uh, you have more focus because you're only focused on four charts. And basically, if you add on, uh, if you're a little bit more experienced, you could add on gold and oil, right? And I always share those, uh, those six charts. And uh, basically, you keep it very simple. And all you have to do is kind of like uh, narrow your time frame. Now, there are setups that in some days are developing on a smaller time frame. Some trades are developing on a higher time frame. It just depends on how the price action reaction is. It just depends on how the daily, the weekly uh, price action is according to the chart structure. So definitely you have more focus because instead of uh, uh, scouring through 6,000 stocks or uh, especially uh, in earnings season where you have a plethora of earnings, you have at 1.200 in, in week eight, I think you have about 255 stocks that are reporting earnings on a daily basis. So that's a lot of homework that you need to do. Uh, the other thing is that um, you can take on a short position uh, with these. So I remember the day when I was trading, I don't know, let's say X, I was trading X. Uh, and X sometimes it's hard to borrow depending on the broker. And if you would like to short X, if you wanted to short X, uh, then uh, you would have to do the chart analysis, et cetera, et cetera. And by the time you wanted to execute the trade, uh, you would see that it's hard to borrow. So then you couldn't short the, uh, short, uh, you couldn't short the stock. With futures, you could go long, you could go short, you could make money in either direction. You can make money in a sideways market, in a trending market, so you can make money in any kind of market environment. You have central clearing of the volume, it's super reliable. You could actually use it for hedging. You don't have to pay attention to earnings. Of course, earnings are fueling, and we did have, uh, in the past, we did have some webinars about earnings and how you can trade. In fact, I think we had it last Saturday, how you can trade earnings uh, through indices, and that's super interesting. We're gonna have to repeat that webinar. Um, and uh, you could actually trade earnings. Uh, you could trade Apple, Google, et cetera. Um, through NASDAQ. You could trade whenever Boeing has earnings, you could trade it through the Dow. So uh, I could teach you how to do that. And we also do that in the trading room. Um, oh, you definitely get better commissions, right? So even with Thinkorswim that I use, I have a preferred rate because I do trade a lot of volume. So it's different than, uh, you know, you would open an account now. Um, but uh, Trade Station very competitive. Like I said, they have about a dollar and fifty cents per side for the full futures contract, and uh, they have about fifty cents per side uh, for the E mini micro contract. Uh, I don't use any special indicators. I think the only people that are making money uh, off indicators are the people that are selling them. And the reality is that uh, you need to learn how to trade price action. Uh, now, how many of you guys in here uh, watch the movie Billions, the show Billions? How many of you guys watch the show Billions and know Bobby Axelrod from the show? How many of you guys? Just please type it in the room. All right. And share it with all the attendees as well. Share it with all the attendees, not only the panelists, guys. All right. So, okay, Alex, you're not watching it? <laughs> okay. So here's the thing, you know, he's a big, uh, big hedge fund manager. So the thing is, Larry, I just love that show. Sab, John, I love the show. It is so, it's like you're having a motivation, um, a motivational coach with you because you get all fired up on Mondays and really kind of like have a, 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 a kind of have like a, you know, like a different feeling when you're approaching the market. So it's really nice to see that. Uh, I, I really recommend it. If you guys have not watched Billions, just start watching. It's about tr trading. It's about uh, a hedge fund. So it's just 
No, they don't have it on Netflix, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it's on Showtime. I don't know how you can get that. Uh, just browse the internet. I don't know if Prime has it. I don't think Prime has it. But anyways, there's there should be a way where you could get uh, where you could get this show. It's highly motivational. I love it. You learn a lot from this show. But the reality is that they're watching charts. It's a hedge fund. Do you think that a guy like Bobby Asara, which is a multi-billionaire, would actually go online and scour for an indicator that is going to uh, provide him with a perfect entry stop target, et cetera, et cetera? No. Do you think that any institutional trader out there is going to look for uh, the show name is Billions? Uh, the show's name is Billions. Uh, it's a great show. So uh, the reality is that, that is, there is not one institutional trader out there that is using, let's say, a quote unquote proprietary indicator. Guys, just read price action candlesticks, billions with an S, billions with an S, plural, billions. Uh, so uh, guys, I truly want you to learn a simple method of trading, which is candlestick based. You're getting the best interaction. You're reading to read the interaction between the bears uh, and the bulls uh, on different levels, on different time frames. It is all you need to do. The simple, just go back to simple, guys. Go back to simple. Forget about everything that is overly complicated. Just use simple volume. We're gonna show you on charts what I use, what I've been using since I started trading. And that is like 20 years ago. Like, do you think that if you work for an institution, do you? Let's say you work for Goldman Sachs. Do you think that a guy at Goldman Sachs that is just starting out and is just so, uh, absolutely, Wayne. Um, oh, really? Popcorn time has billions? Thank you for that. Okay. So do you think that a guy that works from Goldman Sachs is going to go online? He's just starting a job and he's going online and say, hey, I got to find this perfect indicator because I don't want to, uh, you know, I want to get my bonus at the end of the year. No, they're, they're trading price action. They're uh, working patterns. It's all simple to trading. Guys, please, indicators, you're not going to make money. To, there is not one indicator. They're all lagging. It's all price action. Price is the only reliable uh, source uh, on your charts. All right, so let's move forward. Uh, remember yesterday um, I said that I'm going to uh, share with you my setup. Uh, I'm sorry, this is not my Michigan office. This is my Boca Raton office. You can see the palm trees right here. I have a gorgeous view, uh, and I love spending time. In fact, uh, 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 throughout the whole year, I'm about three months in Michigan, and I'm uh, the rest of the time I'm in Boca Raton, Florida. If you guys are there, I would love to have some coffee with you. Okay, that's a little birdie. I mean, that's weird because when I took this picture, it was a little birdie. Okay, this is my desk in Boca Raton, not in, not in Michigan. Now, this is the desk where I am right now. In fact, you could see the price right, uh, price right here. I took, this tri I took this picture five minutes before I came into the session. So you can see that this is today. So I took this picture at 4.05 before coming into the session. And this in the middle right here where you see the dome, this is actually the mini SMP. And this is my trading platform here. I have only four screens, okay? Uh, yes, I don't have anything else on my desk. I didn't hide anything. So you're going to see like whether it's here. So I don't have anything on my desk other than my keyboard, my mouse, and the microphone because I speak in the microphone uh, in my trading room. So I need that. Uh, and you could see it right here. I don't have anything. I don't have any distractions, any papers, any, uh, any pens, any calculators. I don't have anything. I don't want to distract myself from the charts. I don't even have a clock. Now, let me give you a little surprise. I have two Michigan offices. This is also, you can see the price actor right here. This is still the m and &E and because I rushed up. This is from today. This is my other trading platform from upstairs. I have two offices. Uh, one I have it, it's like a walkout basement and the other one is upstairs. Okay. So we have basically three levels that, uh, so, um, this one is upstairs. So, uh, I tend to move and sometimes I trade from here and I have one platform that is actually, uh, that is actually set. And this one right here is actually set, uh, to initiate more swing trades and, uh, active investing type of trades. And the one downstairs where I am right now. Okay, this one right here is for day trading alone. All right, so in the first uh, in the first uh, half of the morning, I'm here, 
okay? And you can see that I don't have a gorgeous view here, and that's uh, why, you know, most of the time I'm, I'm spending my time here in Boca Raton, because I absolutely love it, uh, to, uh, cl very close to the beach. All right, so last week, remember, uh, last, uh, last time we had an open house was back in June. And uh, if you have missed the open house back in June, you just left $8,750 per contract on the table, guys. And this is the, call, this is the trade that we called into, um, oops, sorry about that. This is the trade that we called into, um, into the room. You can see it right here. The entry is 1342 with a stop at 1335. We had the targets here and the trade just started to run higher. And by the way, the trade was called in the PM session. So if you guys, you know, want to benefit from the whole entire, uh, uh, for the whole entire day, remember, if we might need, we might not have trades in the morning. And then, you know, we may have just, or we may have just trades in the morning and no trades in the afternoon. I don't over trade. I typically take one to two trades a day. On rare occasions, I take three trades. And let me tell you when I take the three trades. I typically take the three trades. If I have the first trade as a losing trade, I try to get back in and try to get my money back. And that's when I try to force the thing, uh, force the note a little bit and try to recoup my money. So I take another one or another two trades. So you can see the portfolio right here. It's in the portfolio. Last time when we had, how funny is this, guys? Because we, uh, we had the open house on June 13th. And we're having it on September 12th, so a day before. <laughs> All right, so we're not doing this very often. We're doing it at the beginning of the quarter. This is something that we don't do on a regular basis because I don't really have a lot of time to, to spend on uh, the open houses. It's really time consuming to do these open houses with education, with class. I would rather go outside. All right, and enjoy. But anyways, the reality is that, you know, if you would have taken this trade, you would have made a lot of money. Even if we would trade it, guess what? A little micro. And these are some trades that are sent from my traders. You can see that you can see it right here. These are two little micros that were taken by one of my traders that sent me the snapshot. I have traders that are sending me snapshots of their trades. I'm going to share with you uh, some of uh, the trading room comments that I that we had today with uh, from some of our members that were very happy with some of the trades. Uh, and this is a trade that we had in, uh, in uh, gold, right? So not only that you can trade the micros, the mini micros in the indices, but remember, there are a lot of traders that do, do not know that you could trade micros in gold. You could also trade minis. You could trade micros or minis in silver. You can trade a mini in oil. So there are a lot of things that, uh, that you could trade with mini. So you don't have to risk a lot of money in order to make big bucks. Uh, I typically, for commodities, I like to keep them for swing trading purposes because they're a little bit on the wilder side. Okay, so this is again from a, from an, a, from a, a member that has an account size of six thousand dollars, and he just made uh, uh, he made here on this day in July, and this is July, and he traded a uh, gold again, and he made almost seven hundred dollars with four four little micros guys we're talking about super tiny 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 size and he made seven almost seven hundred dollars so what that means is take a look right so he opened an account he has he had about six thousand dollars no i i should correct that he started the account with five thousand dollars he grew the account with six thousand dollars and uh, to six thousand dollars and now he had at this point in time in july he had sixty Seven, almost $6,700 in this account. And he's only doing the swing trading. Okay. This is, uh, this is the same trader. And he kept on sending me, uh, he kept on sending me updates, updates, updates on uh, what he's doing and what his status is. You could see like, uh, and by the way, he doesn't even have time to be in the trading room. He is, uh, he is, uh, um, uh, he is on and off in the trading room. Uh, he's actually logging into the morning, but he's a physician. So he logs out, uh, you know, he does surgeries, et cetera, et cetera. Then he goes back and he checks into the trading room to see if, uh, uh, if we take any trades or anything like that. But he wanted this small trading size account because he wants to get his son ready for trading because this is a passion that he has never pursued. And he wants to give up, uh, being a physician because he wants to go full-time, uh, full-time trading. Okay. Uh, so today we closed the trade into YM and we have, uh, we have had another 
a member of ours, Mark, that sent me this uh, snapshot, and this is a snapshot. You can see it's identical. Uh, most of the traders in my room have identical charts with me uh, because I share uh, my platform layout with all my students. Uh, and uh, you can see right here that he was trading. Actually, he was actually trading two micros. Uh, no, four micros. He was trading four micros right here. He tr he actually. Uh, uh, closed the trade today. I think it was 27.50 because he was going back and forth. He wanted to hold it a little bit more. We were going into lunch. It became very choppy. So he closed the trade at 27.50. Uh, you can see it right here. It was trading at 26.985. So he closed it at 27.050. So his account is way up right here. And this is the trade that we called uh, into the room on Monday. So in the room on Monday, the reality is that we had three trades. The first trade that we took was a day trade in YM and the trade, the day trade stopped out. And then we decided to uh, keep the original swing trade because swing trades have a little bit of a wider stop. And we decided to, uh, decided to keep the swing. Uh, it was going higher. I'm going to share with you at the end of the presentation, how we realized this gain and how we maximized our profits. Uh, even trading a small account uh, into the M&E Dow, and we capitalized on this really beautiful move that the market had. And that is no rocket science. Uh, it is just interpreting and analyzing price action uh, uh, throughout the day. Um, can Robert can uh, sure um, uh, send, shoot me an email on info at Trade Out Loud, uh, and I'll send you my uh, my computer my system specifications. Okay, uh, I can share with you right now the fact that uh, I have custom computers and uh, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here that I love to share with my traders. So I have a custom computer, a computer like mine typically costs around five to six thousand um, dollars. Please, guys, uh, uh, email me at info at trade I can't get I, I can't copy or paste anything into the screen. So shoot me an email at info at tradeallow.com. More than happy to share with you the specifications, but please just give me a little bit of time because I'm just typing with one hand. <laughs> okay, so just give me a day or two until I get back with you with uh, on that information. But I'm going to let you in uh, because this is a very interesting topic, our trading machine, right? So what I use for, uh, for computers, so I, I use a really high grade trading computer because you can see that I'm share, I have a lot of charts. I have many, many, many more windows that I'm watching on the screen other than the ones that you see that are minimized. And I pull them up throughout the day and I uh, try to watch all the indices. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm sorry, I try to watch all the stocks through, uh, uh, from the indices because I watch them on charts, not on a chart list. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, my computer, if you go anywhere to build it, like a Falcon or um, uh, Easy Trading Computers or et cetera, et cetera, so there are a lot of uh, trading computer outlets out there, you would pay five to $6,000 for a computer like this. I paid around $1,700 for each computer that I have. Uh, yes, I do share the setups with all the students, all the students, Carlo. Uh, and uh, the, the way I've done it, I'm going to send you guys the specifications. Uh, for those that are interested, shoot me an email. Uh, I have a really good friend, and he's a computer guy, and he told me about this place. It's called Micro Center. Okay, I'm going to try to type it in the garage sale. Micro Center. I think you could do it online. I'm not really sure. You could do it online. It's microcenter.com. And uh, I went there. Uh, so basically, my computer guy, uh, my computer guy, uh, provided me with the, the specifications uh, for my computer. Uh, and uh, I went to Micro Center. I and by the way, they're um, awesome, Michael. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> Probably you would have paid three times more if you would have bought it anywhere else. Uh, and uh, you go to them, they're extremely knowledgeable, like they're extremely no knowledgeable uh, at uh, Micro Center. They really know their stuff. So they are, they're like really knowing computers. And you go there, you tell them what you want. They're building the computer for you. You buy all the pieces uh, and uh, you have them assemble it for you. You buy the windows, you buy the office, whatever you need and you're having a finished product, all you have to do is take it home or they uh, ship, it home, sh ship it home to you. You just plug it in, okay? Um, 
uh, what kind of screen do you have and how big is it? I think it's a 37. Uh, I have to guess. I got my trading screens uh, from Costco, actually. All my trading screens are from, are from Costco. Okay. Uh, all righty, guys, let's continue. So this is the small trading account. Now, scanning and finding the needle in the haystack. This is actually uh, the hardest thing to do as a trader. When do you get in? When do you know how to sit on your hands? And that is by price action. The price action is going to tell you exactly when you need to get in, when you need to exit. Now, remember at the beginning of the session when I was describing about describing my proprietary uh, trading uh, method, I was uh, uh, actually explaining that there are two big trigger times that happen in the market, one at 10.30 and one at 2.30. There's no secret about this, but you just have to know how to trade this and you have to know how to put the pieces together because there's a little bit more. It's not only that, man, I'm going to jump in at 10.30 and the trade is going to take off either higher or uh, lower. No, you, th there's a lot that goes, there are a lot of components that go into this. But the reality is that there are these two time frames that you need to pay attention to. And you need to, uh, you, you, you need to know what to look for. You need to look, uh, look at the momentum. Uh, you need to look at the volume. Now, remember, there are a lot of things that are happening going into tomorrow's trading session. So I didn't really realize when uh, I scheduled this trading session, tomorrow is going to be a very difficult day to trade because we have the ECB, uh, the ECB announcement. Apparently, they're going to be doing some more quantitative easing. It is also the last day with Draghi uh, um, at the helm of the ECB. So it's going to be a very big meeting and we're expecting a lot of volatility, especially in the overnight trading session. There's going to be some calibration in the, uh, into these indices uh, that is going to start uh, at about 3 or 4 p.m., uh, 4 a.m. Eastern, if you're on the Eastern Standard Time. And uh, uh, other than that, uh, we have some own data, some own, uh, some, some, uh, uh, some data as well that is coming out uh, at 8.30. Uh, and that is U.S. Uh, economic data that is coming out at 8.30. So the impact of uh, uh, the news, of the ECB news announcement, of the press conference, are they going to go with negative interest rates or not? Obviously, it's going to influence the currency market in a huge way. And influencing the currency market is definitely where we're thinking about the euro and we're thinking about the dollar that they, because it's impacting the euro it's going to impact the dollar remember the euro and the dollar are uh, are uh, like on a teeter totter when the euro is up the dollar is down and the other way around and basically the, uh, the factoring of the euro is influencing our indices so there's a lot there are a lot of mechanisms that you have to understand when you're trading economic releases even though i know how to uh, uh, navigate the market through economic releases. I don't like to hold position into economic releases. And I'm also going to share with you uh, my, uh, my top trading rules. So basically when I, uh, when I come in front of the market, I look at the indices at the pre-market, uh, at the pre-market trading session activity in the context of the daily and the weekly and kind of like observe and see if they have power to push higher or power to push lower. If they're sideways, I'm not trading. I'm here and in the trading room, I'm off the mic and I'm telling the, uh, my members in the room, listen guys, there's nothing to trade. I'm not going to trade right now. I'm going to be off the mic because I have no interest in trading a sideways market. There are exceptions to the rule when you're having a linear sideways market, uh, linear sideways market. Let me see if I have my drawing tool here and I do. I uh, just want to show you really quickly what, what a linear sideways market is. Okay, just uh, bear with me. All right, so I'm going to draw it right here. A linear market, uh, a linear sideways market is when you have a defined support resistance and when the price is uh, gravitating between this support resistance. And if you're having an uptrend, so if you have, uh, let's say, uh, uh, if you have the price going from a point A to a point B and then accelerating to a point D, okay, if you have the pullback, you could buy this point D, uh, B, right, because we are at point B every single time right? Because we're in an uptrend. You're never going to short these highs, okay? Never shorting these highs because you have no idea how shallow, how steep the pullback is going to be, right? So you don't know how that execution is going uh, is gonna to happen. So when, because here's the thing, if you buy these pullbacks and you're actually watching momentum at the top of these ranges, the reason why you're buying the pullbacks 
uh, on support is because if you're gonna get at one point price velocity, or if you're gonna get at some point into those prime time trigger times at 1030, or th now keep in mind there are about eight trigger times that happen in the market. These are just two of them that are a little bigger than the rest. Uh, but if you're getting the price, uh, price velocity to the upside, guess what? It's gonna blow through this resistance, right? Right here, it's gonna continue higher. So that's the reason why I never short resistance. And uh, a lot of traders, the reason why the market popped so much uh, right now, and, and actually from 27.050, the Dow to 27.150, uh, and uh, uh, I, the S&P not so much, the S&P not so much, but, uh, and uh, neither uh, did NASDAQ because NASDAQ has had huge resistance at 78.87. So that was not on our list to watch, but uh, definitely for the last two to three weeks, we have been focusing on the Dow and we have been on the right side of the trade. But definitely uh, the Dow was trading into a massive resistance. And at the end of the day, what happened, it was trading right into this uh, weekly resistance right here. It was trading into weekly resistance. But what happened, is that a lot of traders were shorting this high, uh, thinking that, hey, it's gonna go a little bit down or it's gonna fade into the end of the day, where the reality is that a lot of traders, the more traders were shorting, they had the stops and the price pulled in, triggered all the stops, there was an algo that collected all of you guys that were short and all of the traders that were short, this is what algos love to do. They love to pull in, they do that slingshot. right? So what they do is the price goes up, 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 and now they clear the stops, and then they push the market higher. This is what algorithmic uh, trading is, uh, is all about. And I teach my traders how to trade with algos and how to be on the right side of the trade, okay? And trade with the algorithmic trading. We have a highly uh, algorithmic trading. Uh, why do you think we have an algorithmic trading? And, you know, and I get this question a lot. It's like, how do you know where they are and where these algos are hitting? Well, you're forgetting one thing. I'm coming from the institutional side, right? So uh, institutional traders are the ones that are programming the, uh, that are creating the setup, that are creating the programs, right? And they're passing their program and their trading structure and their trading plan to their programmers. And their programmers are just taking the information and, uh, and computing it into the system. But the reality is that the strategies are institutional strategies, right? They're institutional strategies and the algos are, uh, are just the executioners. They're just executing the trades, okay? So this is, uh, uh, it's, no, uh, it's no surprise that, you know, they're, they're doing, because they know, and by the way, guys, did you know that your brokers are basically selling your information uh, to these algorithmic companies? So they know where you are and they know, they love, love, love to get the retail traders right? They love to get the retail trades. They love to get their hands on as, on as many contracts as they can at a certain level in the game. And when I talked to you guys earlier about the fourth price points on uh, uh, four, four price points on, uh, on these indices that they react off, uh, including gold and oil and very few commodities, these are the price points where these algos are hitting. Uh, hitting. All right, so let's get to day trading and swing trading time frame. Uh, you can use the, ex exactly, so yes, Forex, 100%, you could use the methodology that I teach in, uh, in the futures class for Forex. In fact, we did, we do have some students that are 100% Forex traders, uh, and uh, I have had special sessions with them, uh, absolutely no cost to them, so I had to adapt uh, the charts for them. So there are very small differences. I've been trading for this for many years. Like I said, I don't do it now because I trade and uh, I traded through uh, futures. Uh, but uh, I have some special sessions with them after the class. We have uh, we had two mentoring sessions uh, where I had adapted uh, and I told them some extra elements that they need to watch for in the forex market. All right, so day trading timeframes and swing trading timeframes. I focus on uh, the one, the two, the five, and the 15 minute time frame, but they're not all created equal. In the morning session, I use the one and two minute time frame, so about 10 o'clock, and then I shift to the five minute going into 12 o'clock, and then I zoom out to the 15 minute chart throughout lunchtime, and then I go back to a five minute chart at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And that is the time where the setups are forming and when the algos are trying to work a little bit better. So you have to be in sync with how they're trading and what they're trading. 
Uh, the reason why Pablo, the two minutes, and uh, you can use the three minutes, but I find that the two minutes and more is more accurate for, and uh, I, I had, it, the reality is that I have used the three minutes, uh, but it's not responding so well to the three minutes uh, anymore. I've been using the three minutes for about three to five years uh, before 2016. And after 2016, I zoomed into the two minutes because of the volatility and the best, a better risk to reward you're getting off the one and the two minutes. Uh, but I agree, if you're using the three minute, you're a little bit on the safer side because it's between, like you said, it's between, uh, it's between the two and the five, actually. All right, so I, I will get back to you on that, Lynn. So uh, this, this is for my day trading. So uh, keep in mind that I always tend to look uh, when I day trade, I look at higher time frames. I always keep some charts of the 30 minute, the one hour, and the four hour that are into my home screen uh, that are keeping me on the right side of the trade. Because if I get some kind of rotation that is happening uh, into the uh, into the one hour, or I'm not issuing a continuation based on an hourly basis, because you'd have to look at the time of the day, you have to look at the exact time, at the precise time, at candlestick formation, et cetera, et cetera. So what you want to do is uh, you, you, you want to have the higher time frames dictate for higher and issue continuations uh, for your smaller time frames to have continuations. Because if you're having an inverse or a sideways hourly or a four hour, and even if you're having a trigger on the one or the three or the two or the five minute, it's not going to work. It's going to trigger, it's going to fail. And that's the number one reason a lot of trades are stopping out because you don't correlate your trades. So that's another chart synchronicity. Uh, that we're talking about. And this is the second stage of synchronicity. So we're talking about synchronicity within the element that we're trading. And we're talking about synchronicity when we're talking about, uh, about uh, different indices. Now for swing trading, uh, Peter, I do use the tick charts only sometimes. And I use the 522, uh, 522 uh, tick chart and only on high volatility days. I've used it last uh, year uh, into uh, October, November, December, and I used it at the beginning of the year, February, March, uh, and then I zip, zoomed uh, uh, out a little bit to the time frame. Uh, I only use the tick chart only when I have high volatility in the markets. Now, uh, we can expect high volatility going into next year, but that's a different topic. Uh, I'm gonna organize a separate seminar, uh, getting you guys ready for next year's trading because next year, uh, typically uh, pre-election years are very, very bullish, all right? So that's the reason why I have been, and if you look through my portfolio, 99% of the trades that I have executed uh, this year are to the long side, and even last year, they're still to the long side. Swing trades, day trades, et cetera, I always uh, like to be in sync with what the bigger momentum is and what the institutional traders are doing, even though I'm trading like the smaller time frame, the one, the two minute, two minute and the five minute. For swing trading, uh, I'm using the one hour, the four hour, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. You can actually initiate trades, especially uh, when you're trading the indices, uh, but also in stocks uh, for short-term momentum of uh, momentum swings uh, for one to two days hold, uh, even through three days and about one hour to four hours. If you're taking the daily, weekly, and monthly, you can expect a higher time frame. Uh, a higher time frame, but I never use Lynn. I never use a 15 minute for. Uh, for a swing trade, because the risk that you're going to have for a 15 minute uh, uh, for a 15 minute trade is not going to uh, offer you the uh, it's not going to offer you a good structure uh, to hold uh, a leg up to higher targets, a much higher leg up to a higher target. Uh, here are my 15 minute trading of uh, 15 trading rules that I want to share with you. I never trade news. If you like to trade news, it's great. I don't. I love my capital and my money way too much to uh, try to be a gambler within this time frame. So I never trade news. I never trade announcements. Uh, I never, uh, so I never, um, I, I, I never trade FOMCs. I, I never trade anything news. Okay. So I step aside. I do not trade uh, crude oil ahead of inventory numbers. I never trade it. Okay. I never trade it. And in fact, after the numbers, I have to see like a really good setup. I need to see the price calibrate, find support, find resistance, find its own individual level before it takes off in either direction. I do not trade natural gas uh, ahead of uh, natural gas numbers. Uh, I do not trade FOMC afternoons, and this is just me. 
And the other thing that is very important, I risk only half of my risk per trade on option expiration Friday. And remember, next uh, uh, next Friday, we have quadruple witching option expiration, which is pretty much a big deal because you're having stocks, uh, indices, uh, futures, et cetera, that are expiring all on the same day. So you're getting quadruple witching option expiration. Uh, prices and stocks and indices are going to be pinpointed at certain values. And it's going to be really hard to trade because we cannot guess ahead of time where, uh, where those values are. Sometimes uh, you're getting a dormant uh, morning where there's no price action and you're getting, uh, you're getting a big push into the end of the day or a big push up or down into the end of the day, or uh, you're getting a very volatile morning with a big upside or downside, uh, and then you're getting a very choppy afternoon, tra uh, afternoon trading session. Um, I only take one trade on option expiration. I only focus in the morning. If I don't get my trade in at 10.30 or 11 o'clock, I'm done for the day. Uh, I'm, I'm still gonna leave the trading room open, but I'm done. I do not trade option expiration Fridays and especially quadruple witching option expiration Fridays. Next week we also have, so remember this Friday, we're gonna be rolling into the new contract. So that means not tomorrow, but the day after tomorrow, we're gonna be rolling into the new contract, the futures indices, the volume is gonna uh, damp down a little bit. Uh, trading is gonna become more difficult, volume, like I said, volume is gonna go down a little bit uh, and uh, setups are not gonna be very reliable. So we have to rely on a little bit higher time frames to execute trades within these last two days. Uh, and even after the roll, so a couple of days before the roll and a couple of days after the roll, trading is a little bit challenging. All right, so I never jump in trades. So sometimes, you know, I have price runaway. So what that means is that uh, it has a huge breakout from the overnight trading session and it ramps up uh, in the, uh, into the, once the New York trading session open, it just flies or it just crashes down. Uh, I never jump in trades. So I wait for my prime time trigger time around 1030 to see where the calibration brings the price. And then if I see any setup there, I take it. If I don't see any kind of setup, I'm off the mic. I'm just watching. Uh, I'm just an observer in the market. I don't want to be a donator. So I never jump in trades. I never chase trades. I never over trade. So um, I don't know if there are some members in uh, uh, some members from the trading room in here uh, with me tonight, uh, but you're never going to see me over trade, whether I'm swing trading stocks or whether I'm day trading futures or anything else. No, I'm very extremely selective in my criteria of finding and executing trades. So I just don't spit out trades just for the sake of, you know, just for the sake of, of calling trades. I, I know some traders that are calling like 50 to 70 trades per day. Well, I think they're, they may be working with a broker hand in hand because I think, um, uh, I think that, you know, the brokers are making all the money because if you're getting just one, two points and no continuation, I mean, I don't see the, the reason for it. So like I said, I'm coming from uh, I'm coming from the professional side of trading and I could share, honestly share my two cents of trading. So when I'm up at least two times my risk level, so let's say my risk level, and I'm just gonna give you an example here. Let's say my risk level is $1,000 per trade. So if I'm up, let's say $2,000 on the trade, so I make twice my of what I risked, or if you're trading a micro and if you're, if you're risking $100 and if you made $200 on the day, uh, I typically like to quit, okay? Uh, because the best moves uh, into, uh, into the futures market are uh, either in the first two hours of the day or in the last three minutes of the day. Uh, but if there's something that is mouth-watering into the end of the trading session, if I made my money in the morning and I made my two or three hours in the morning, I risk one more hour or half an hour into the uh, afternoon, late afternoon trading session. And uh, if uh, I lose that money, then I'm done for the day, obviously. So that's one of the reasons why I take one to three trades max a day. I always allow myself three trades, right? And uh, there's a reason for that. So I'm allowing myself to take three trades a day uh, because if I have a first trade, if I'm stopping out, I want to allow myself to another chance to make my money back. Uh, and then if I break even, let's say on the second trade, I want to, uh, I want to put my risk back into the game, uh, to start making money for that day. I avoid, avoid emotional attachment to the trades. Uh, I like to choke the trades once I'm, uh, close to my target levels. I like to trail the trades. I never take myself out of the trade, but I'm letting it balance out so I can lift my stop. And if I'm taken out, I'm taken out. But anyways, I'm trying to let the market take me out of the trade and I don't like to offer out 
uh, on a silver platter uh, my price, my targeted price to the market. I ignore all the water cooler chatter when I'm trading. So I'm zoomed into my, uh, I'm zoomed into my, uh, my trades. I could care less if there's a, a trader on Facebook or on Twitter or any other social media uh, 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 outlet that is saying that he's long the mini SMP or short or whatever. I could care less what everybody else is doing. That's their money, their account, their trading plan. I'm trading my trading plan, my money. And that's why you need to have an individual approach. Uh, also, there are a lot of uh, individuals that are going to going on CNBC or Bloomberg, etc. I ignore everything. In fact, when I trade, you saw I have a really clean desk and I don't have anything. You, you can literally hear crickets. I don't have any kind of distraction, no music, no nothing. So I'm 100% charts. Why? Because I'm day. I'm a day trader. If I was, if I was swing trading, yeah, I would like uh, like to have a little bit of music in the background. But like I said, in the uh, like I've uh, mentioned to my uh, to my uh, to my uh, members in the uh, in the trading room, I'm not going to be doing these classes for a very long time. So I'm going to be doing them probably for about another couple of years, and then I'm going to retire just for swing trading because I don't want to spend my time in front of the computer. I want to enjoy my life because that's the whole purpose of trading. Uh, so my primary focus each day is growth and capital preservation. You are going to see that tomorrow. And I'm um, very cautious in calling trades. I'm going to do a full analysis on uh, every index uh, going into tomorrow, gold and oil. And then we're going to be waiting for some trades to line up. Uh, I increase my trade size only when I have an accumulation of, of at least 50% of my account. If my account grows to 50%, I'm increasing my size just a little bit. Now, we talked yesterday about, uh, about the fact that uh, the CME has listed uh, the Imini Micros, uh, where one micro uh, is actually the tenth of the size. So basically, there are 10 micros to a full-size contract. Uh, and that enables a lot of traders to participate in the market uh, in swing trading because before, smaller size accounts would not be able to participate in swing trades because uh, they could not position size. They would have ginormous stops in their trades. When now with micros, you could actually position size to your desired amount of risk per trade. All right, I love the micros because it, you have the flexibility to build positions, day trading, swing trading, and even position trading if, you were, if you're into it. You have the opportunity to scale in and out of positions, and this is what we're going to be discussing today. And what is scaling in? Scaling in is a trading strategy of itself, and also it is a trading tactic. It is a, it is a technique that, gradually, that is gradually increasing and or decreasing the size of the trade, the day trade or swing trade, and investment uh, uh, position. Scaling into a trade, so when you're scaling in, you're, it's called that you're averaging in. And I'm going to share with you uh, in a few slides how we executed the YM trade that, uh, 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 that we initiated on September 9th and Monday. So uh, averaging involves setting a risk amount per trade. We talked about this uh, in, uh, in detail in yesterday's session. Uh, so you need to decide then that risk amount needs to be the same at every single trade. You're using different account sizes. You're going to have different results and you're not going to progress. Your account is not going to grow. Successful traders allocate the same risk amount per trade every day, day in, day out, day in, day out. If you increase your, uh, your account size by 15% and 20%, you can lift it up a little bit, but then again, you use the same, 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 same. So you're not taking a trade with $200 risk, the next, trade, the next trade with $500 risk, and the, uh, the uh, third one with $800 risk. If you're using just do an average, use 1% of your account or 2%, depending on your account size, so depending on your risk tolerance. If you're a beginning trader, you could go below one uh, and use that amount. If that is $100, position size, use micros for that, but don't go $200 here or $100 there. Just go constant, constant, constant. This is how you achieve consistency because the reality of trading, in trading, you need to have what? You need to have, you need, there are these uh, five, uh, focus, uh, uh, focal aspects. You need to have consistency. And this is how you realize consistency with position sizing. Uh, then you need to have the discipline to implement your strategy and wait for the setups. You need, to you need the confidence to execute your trades. Uh, you need the patience to wait for your setups. 
And then you need to have the passion because if you don't love what you're doing, if you think that you're getting into trading just because you've heard that trading you know, can offer you uh, the liberty to, uh, you know, to do the things you love in your free time and you have more time for yourself, et cetera, you know, all the blah, blah, blahs. Remember, if you don't have passion for it, if you don't love what you're doing, you're never going to get anywhere. I love trading. I would not do anything in the, in the world. Trading for me is it. I love trading. I, uh, I, I like, uh, and I, trade many i have many styles of tr many styles of trading day trading swing trading active investing and you have to love what you're doing if you don't pour love into it you're never going to achieve anything all right so it involves the risk amount per trade budget for your total exposure to the trade then committing portions of that budget incrementally so let's say you have, you know, you have a very small account and you're going to only risk $100. Now, those of you that have larger account sizes, think about $500 or $1,000 or more. Uh, but today we want to focus on individuals that have smaller trading account sizes because it is doable. You can supplement your income with this and you could actually down the line, just quit your job as you're increasing your account size, or you could save $500 per month, just throw it into your small trading account size, just quit those lattes at Starbucks. <laughs> and uh, I, had a, I had a client that said, you know, you should buy a Keurig because there, there are these new Keurigs right now that, uh, uh, that can make cappuccinos. In fact, I had one. It's absolutely delicious. Uh, and it beats Starbucks. So quit those high priced items that you're uh, spending your money on uh, and just uh, just make a little effort and just put put aside how much you can and for a trading uh, for a trading account. And now you have the opp opportunity to trade the micros. So even if you're trading a hundred dollar size, you could add increments because if your position sizing for, let's say for a hundred dollars, you could actually have four contracts. So you could actually scale in one contract, right? And then scale in the next one until you achieve your risk of a hundred dollars, right? Uh, and then, um, uh, this can be seen as a dollar cost averaging or a form of risk management, meaning investing a portion of your allocated risk on an early signal without the risk of investing your whole entire trade amount. When I'm day trading, I'm either day trading or not doing anything. So in day trading, uh, I want to use my whole fixed amount because I am very focused. I'm very keen on those zones. So uh, I'm either in or out. But when you're swing trading, you know, and there are, uh, and uh, trust me, there are, uh, there are times that are great when you're day trading, you know, to start averaging in, but you really need to know what you're doing and you have to use this methodology as uh, a damage control method and not as a scale in. Okay. So scaling out of a position. So now we know that scaling in is building a position as the trade is going for you or it's going against you as a method of damage control. Now, what is scaling out? Scaling out of position can be seen as averaging out. You're layering out. So for instance, we had targets in the Dow and at each level in the target, we layered out a, a, a certain lot amount, right? A certain lot. So that means that we're easing out of the trade. I love it when I'm taking, you know, about 50% of my profit into target one. Target one is always the easiest target to achieve. Uh, I, when I'm going into target two, I always like to offer another quarter. And then the rest of my position, I like to trail out until I literally, the market takes me out of the trade. Uh, so once the trade is reaching the first target, you can start liquidating your position incrementally, like I've mentioned, right? So you're booking gains along the way. You have some money booked. You're feeling a lot better. Your emotions are not running high anymore. And uh, you're a little bit more comfortable in your position because you know that you're already, you're already in the money. Uh, can be used as a method of add and reduce technique. Now, this is a sophisticated method. It's called pyramid trading, and I teach it in a separate class. We're going to have these classes scheduled, and this is a more sophisticated kind of method that can potentially really, really boost up your portfolio, especially uh, for, uh, for uh, and this is a great method for swing trading, but it's also a great method for day trading in power trends. Uh, and uh, like I said, this is going to be a special class. It's going to be for advanced traders only, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, like I said, at target one, I like to trade. So this is basically repeating right here. At target one, I like to take half. 
uh, uh, booking my profits. And once I get to target one, I like to lift my stop to a break even or close to a break even the level. So I know that I'm, uh, I, I'm not going to risk any money on that trade. All right, so scale, uh, scaling should uh, scaling it should be a, 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 should be technical, uh, executed, and not randomly. So we're not just because you're like, oh, oh, you know what, the trade is going against me, I'm going to start adding here. No, you got to see it at the technical level. So in my personal opinion, micros are not great for scalping. So if you want to scalp, you still have to use the full contract because when you're scalping, you're looking for one R. So you're getting in, uh, you're getting in with uh, one R, you're uh, getting out with one R. The reality is that I have never seen a successful scalpers, never down the line. I have never seen success, successful scalpers, but I have been seen very successful day traders and very successful swing traders. Uh, but day traders, the ones that are trading with the trend and they're going for more than one R and there's a reason for that. We, we don't have enough time today for me to teach you everything, but there is a reason why one to one R does not work and you're going to end up donating your hard earned money to the market. Uh, the market is gonna suck it up. All right, so scalping is for uh, scalping is for momentum targets. Like I said, the smaller the risk, the higher the odds of stopping out. And this is the reason why uh, most uh, uh, most small account holders blow up their accounts and they penny themselves to death because they're chewing up. So remember, when you're going for only one R, you're let's say you're risking hundred dollars and you're hoping to make a hundred dollars on the chart. So you're making, let's say, that $100, but the reality is you're not really making all $100. I mean, best case scenario, you're getting, the, you're getting the price into target one, but don't forget about commissions, fees, and all that stuff, and your time, right? So you have to get paid for your time. All right, so like I said, you know, this is a, a quick example. Commissions should not be a concern when you're trading, especially the micros. So in the mini S&P, it's about $4 per contract with the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, so you need to make about a point to break even. It's not a big deal. Uh, now this, with TradeStation, they have changed their structure. So now it was about $3 round trip for a micro. Now it's a dollar, okay? With, if, you, uh, uh, if you sign up through us, they're offering you this chance. So if, and this is for members only, but for this session, I'm extending it to you guys. But this is for members only. Uh, uh, the deal is for members only, but you're going to have special permission in case you want to do that. Anyway, so um, uh, if, in case you're worried about the micros uh, uh, volume, guys, the, micros, the micro volume is incredible. It is perfect. You're not going to get a lot of slippage, although at times you're going to get like a tick or two slippage, but you're not, it's not a big deal. Like I said, if you're going for high velocity moves or high velocity trades, you shouldn't be worried. Like I said, it's not for scalping but it's for, uh, it's for better trading. Now, this is a trade that we executed back in this spring, late spring, and this is a trade in NASDAQ, and you can see here the price of uh, just screaming lower. Everybody was like, okay, this is the end of the world. The market is going lower. Uh, everybody, everybody like crash position, okay? Well, guess what? I was a buyer at 77,000, at this time uh, in May, you can see that it's May 3rd, you can see the price stamp right here. On May 3rd, this is a trade that we executed in a room. Uh, on May 3rd, we didn't have the micros and we have high volatility in the market. Not a lot of traders would be, would be uh, uh, were able to participate in these moves, but now you are able to execute these moves as, as they happen, if you know what you're doing. So basically, we, I was a buyer at 7,700. You can see it right here. This is the number right here. Let me see if I could still get my uh, cursor going. All right, here, here we go, 7,700. You can see that there is no setup right here, right? I just jumped in at 7,700. Now I said I don't jump in, but this is the 7,700. Why do you think? And I added here one scale, okay? Just one scale right here, just one scale. Okay, now take a look why, and take a look, and let me show you why I added the, the one scale. Okay, just hold on. All right, let me, whoops, let me see the slide. All right, this is the, all right, this is the original slide where I got in. The next slide, hold on. All right, the next slide is showing you the reason why I jumped in at 7,700. So actually, I didn't jump in, but I got it at support, right? I bought it at support, it was right here right? It was right here. All right. So 7,700 support. I got in here, aggressive buy. Now this is the reason why I added one more lot. And this is when I become technical, right? I'm looking, so I'm correlating my timeframes, 
with my setups, with the time of the day. And everything coincided at the precise location. And guess what? You entered, I entered at 7,700. Let me show you on the 15 minute chart. Okay, hold on. On the 15 minute chart, you see it right here? Because I was navigating, remember what I said in the morning, Venkat? Uh, in the morning, I'm watching the one, two minute as I'm going through the trading session. Uh, and if I have high volatility, I'm going to the five minute. And then as I'm going closer, uh, to lunchtime, to 12 to 2 o'clock, I'm watching the 15 minute because of the volatile move. And this is a big thing because a lot of traders do not know how to calibrate and which time frame to trade. And it truly depends on price action, price action velocity and price action fluency. So I got it here on the 15 minute, no setup. I just got it in because it was sitting on support onto the daily. And this was strong support on the daily. It was due for a bounce, a technical bounce. So remember, guys, you heard it here. News is just a brief interruption in the trend. And then the trend is going to go back on its merry way. Now, I got technical. This is still the 15 minute right here. And we were watching it. And actually, the trade trigger, uh, the, the 15 minute, uh, the 15 minute, uh, uh, the 15 minute trigger came in. We were into lunchtime. It's about 1230 p.m. Eastern. So I added one more lot at a technical level. It was a 15 minute reversal. And I add it at a 711. And I I'm doing the math on the last slide. So now my average is 705.5. All right, because this is a technical rotation as per what I teach. Okay. Now remember, I have been doing this for a very long time, I've been trading for more than 20 years. I've been doing it on an institutional level. And now for the last 16 years, I've been doing it on my retail account. All right, so this is, uh, this is again, I added one more light. Now notice the time frame. Look at my cursor right here. This is the hourly chart, so I expanded, right? I expanded. So because I've expanded here, I added one more lot here because when you're uh, actually doing the scaling, you have to know how to do them and what time frame to do them and in what order to do them. No, it's not scary at all. No, it's not scary at all, Peter. It's not scary. Why would it? Why would it be scary when you're having daily, multi-month support level? You have an area of humongous confluence. This is what algos live for. They and algos picked it up. Remember, I teach a methodology where you can trade these kind of setups. I trade them every day. My portfolio is a true mirror of what I teach and what I execute on a day-to-day -day level. It's not scary at all. This is resistance from prior price action right here. And this is from a year ago. This is from a year ago. So it's multi. So it has had the time to digest and coil around that level. It bursted around that level. And this is a buy off, a strong buy off minor support level. Peter, minor support level is 2,000 times stronger than major support levels. 2,000 times, a gazillion times stronger. I take this even at night. If you wake me up in the middle of the night and you're telling me that there's an index or a stock that is trading on minor support on the daily level, I'm going to blindly tell you to get into my account and buy it. Okay? Full size, not even half size. So anyway, so I did this rotation. This is the final rotation, 7727, this trade with Executor Live in the trading room. 7727, now the average is 7712. Four hour, you notice right here how I'm progressing through time frame. So I initiated the trade when? On the 15 minute. When was my next stat? On the one hour. When was my second, uh, when was my third, my second ad? On the one hour. When is my third ad? On the four hour, right? On the four hour. So here it is, four hour rotation going higher. One more ad, one more ad at 77.47. Last stat, into the end of the trading session at the end of the day, I told my traders, I said, if into tomorrow's trading session, because we were closing high, we were closing high. Last ad was at 7,800. Why? Because we were trading above the prior pivot high. We had a doji off a of confluence area. We also traded into the 20 SMA. We zipped up above the 10 EMA. Over this structure, you see this, you see this, uh, uh, this Christmas light effect here, red, green, red, Green, all these candles right here it got that big boost lift and over 7,800 it landed close to 7,900. This was an example of a trade that has started originally as the possibility to scale in on the dip. 
because we expected the price to pull in a little bit a little bit more than it did but it actually took off immediately and you don't get in all your lots at the same size so if you're trading let's say if you have a thousand dollars and if you're risky you're going to be using 200 dollar increments you could easily do it with uh with micros right now small accounts cannot participate in these volatile market moves using in many micros but you have to know what the heck you're doing guys you can't do this without having the proper knowledge that's why a lot of traders are blowing up their accounts stop all right i'm gonna share with you the stop i also have it on the slide my stop at this point was 76.80 below 76.80 so it was, it was actually 76.79 you see the low right here was 76.82 and i gave it a little bit of room so you position size for that okay all right so let's go back here so buying the dip nasdaq long 7700 the ad 7711 the next dad 7727 third at 7747 fourth at 7800 the average in here is 7737 the target was 7880 and it has achieved target it has achieved huge target you have to know how the these algos are reacting and what these institutional traders are looking for the profit was about 140 points uh, on to NASDAQ and remember we didn't have micros although now you can execute all these trades with micros and these were five lots I typically use five or six lots when I'm doing these types of trades if these are your cup of tea you can execute them with me I have a trading room and I teach you how to do this uh, and it's obviously better if you know how to do it and then you uh, and then you uh, uh, then you join my trading room but I'm doing these trades as they occur in the trading room all right so here's another example of uh, uh of uh of a trade executed with micros and this is again uh you can see it right here i executed i executed this trade at the on the first day on the first day uh yes of course martin i raised my stop along the way obviously oh yeah i locked in break even as soon as i could pronounce my name <laughs> yeah for sure so this is an example on um actually on may 6th when uh, the micros came out i said guys i'm gonna try one micro to see how it trades okay i i didn't go crazy and buy 30 micros right but i showed my traders in the trading room how how it trades and we all had a big aha moment so the first day when the micros came out i took this trade in front of the class i didn't even trade my uh you know my size or anything else because we wanted to be part of this huge excitement, which, which is the micro. Uh, buying power effect, you can see it right here, 690, 693 bucks per contract. I took this contract, I shared the screen live in the room, uh, and you can see it right here. It went up about $103. We, we made it like $110 or something in the straight. So $110 per day. Now, this is really impressive because if you have if you have a very small account size, if you're making $100 average a day, that's pretty quick. That's pretty neat, right? Because $100 a day is about $500 a week. That's $2,000 a month. That's $24,000 a year. And that is actually trading with really, 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 really small size. Okay, that's really small size. Um, consider these uh, these trades or these swing trades or day trades or whatever you, uh, as bonus box. Okay, uh, this is a snapshot, and again, you have my full track record since 2017, since we uh, started the trading room um, and uh, our service. Uh, these are all the trades that were called. You see the good, the bad, and the ugly. You see the down month, the up months, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 2017 18 19 we do have track record for 16 but it's not here uh and you can see right here that this year we still have september october november and december so we have actually four months left and we're all we're we're having a huge year okay we're having a huge year so far we're we're up 41,303 on using one contract per trade if you join my trading room in january if you took all my trades day trades and swing trades not necessarily for small accounts some trades were not for small accounts i because remember we did not have micros um wait that is how do i choose I, I actually teach this in class how i choose exits but i look into resistance areas prior resistance areas i look into confluence areas 
Uh, I'm looking into those four price points that are fulcrums, that uh, there are institutional exit points. Uh, I use Fibonacci, so I use a plethora of, uh, of exit points and managing the trades. And this is a whole chapter that I teach into my class. Uh, so this year, 41,300 is what we have made and we have four months left. You can see that uh, one of the best months was June. Well, August was fantastic, but last, last August was fantastic as well. And this is just the beginning of the month. I mean, we only have traded a week when we're all, uh, already up over $2,000 in it. Uh, these are my September trades and you're gonna say, yeah, a plethora of, uh, yeah. So I use, uh, I use eight, uh, eight uh, areas that I teach my traders how to determine exact, exact uh, target areas. And I don't know if there are any traders with me that are in my trading room. You're gonna see tomorrow firsthand and I'm gonna get, provide you guys the levels. Obviously, I'm not going to April. If you can share this with the room and not all the panels, because I'm the only one that can see what you're typing. So guys, the, the levels that I have, uh, the levels that I have are literally to the T. Like you're gonna watch them and in, in play tomorrow, okay? I'm not gonna give you any, I mean, you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe me, okay? Just put me to the test mark. Uh, these are our September results. We only executed five trades in seven days. So yesterday, guess what? I didn't take any trades. So what? Big deal. I don't have anybody forcing me to take a trade and I don't want to, uh, hey, April, thank you. So April is in the, uh, in the trading room with us and uh, he can actually tell you. Okay, she can actually tell you. Yeah, they're, they're going exactly to the, I'm telling you they're going to our levels, right? And it's, it doesn't happen by chance. Uh, yes, Lynn, because this market is into an uptrend and I would never attempt to short a very strong market because I'm going for the big bucks. I'm not going for one tick, two ticks. I'm not into the tick thing. I'm into big, big numbers. All right, so uh, big, big, bigger, bigger targets. Uh, thank you so much, April. Thank you so much. So all our trades this, uh, this September were long. We, you can see here, YM entry stop target, and we made 35, 35, uh, 35 points. Uh, we had a trade, uh, we had a trade in natural gas. I called it a natural gas. And I, uh, I mentioned uh, in the room that, you know what? I'm gonna go mini with you guys. And I didn't take the full size and I took, uh, I, I took some different lots. I had more size of QM, which is the mini natural gas. My entry, my stop. Um, uh, I'm sorry, this is oil. Uh, my, mini oil. I'm sorry, this is mini oil. This is mini oil, QM. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The natural gas trade is in, uh, is in August. This is mini oil, 53.50, 52.80, blah, 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 blah. We made about $250 on a mini. On a mini. Okay. No hard stop means uh, no exactly mental stop. So we were uh, so we were averaging into the trade. We were at the stage of averaging into the trade, and once the trade started to work for us, we didn't do any more ads, and we actually let it go, and we trailed out today. Okay, so uh, we took some trades in YM. Uh, we actually lost here 30 points in YM, so we had a day trade that uh, we got shaken out of, and then we had. Uh, this other trade. So first off, what we did is I'm going to show you. First off, we took the swing in YM, and then we saw the possibility of a day trade in YM. So we took the day trade in YM, uh, and the trade stopped out. And then we uh, we actually left the swing trade in YM wide uh, wide open. So the trade could be executed with YM or MYM, which is the micro, and uh, we added on the dip. Right, so uh, 26,900 was our original entry, and then uh, the index uh, dropped 26, well, actually dropped below 26, uh, uh, 840. I'm gonna show you the chart in just a second. So it dropped into that area, but that was the confirmation that the price was ready to head higher, okay? So we trailed today at 27,040. Why? Because we have a FOMC meeting tomorrow. I didn't think that the market was really ready. The market was consolidating into lunchtime, uh, took off at three o'clock. And uh, I'm very happy with uh, very happy with our results. So all in all, if you would have taken one contract of YM and one contract of uh, 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 I'm sorry, one contract of YM uh, at 26,840 uh, at one at 900, you would have had a, uh, you would have had $1,700 in what two days trading one contract.
Okay, so trading one contract. Today we also had a day trade. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, absolutely, David. Come tomorrow in the trading room. Okay. Uh. Uh. Sure, David. Let me let me just explain that a little bit. But, uh, second off today we had YM long. These are the parameters. You can see the entry, the stop, and we use hard stops in our day trades. The target one, target two, blah blah blah. And we exited. It trailed out at nine sixty five. Right. So we made one hundred fifty dollars per contract. We were pretty much wrapped up. We had the swing going on. We had we made money in our day trade. I mean, what else can you ask for? All right. So Ron, I don't know if you're here. Uh, Denise is not here, uh, but Denise said I took my first real trade today, and she's my student, so she took the class, so she knows what she's doing. She has the confidence not just to follow me blindly. Uh, so she took my class and said I took my first real trade today on my own in MYM at twenty six nine sixty for a hundred points. Best feeling ever. Thank you for being the best teacher ever. I pour my heart and soul into these classes and everybody, everybody that signs up for my class, even if I'm not going to be teaching this class five years from now or 10 years from now, uh, they're still going to get my undivided attention, undivided attention. I uh, talk to all my students on a regular basis. They call me, we text. Uh, they're actually, all my students are actually my friends right now. So it's one big happy family. Also, Ron, he made 200 ticks on YM and he just closed a trade with $1,000. I mean, I think this is pretty impressive. And this is from today. Okay, by the way, this is from today from my trading room. All right, let me share with you uh, how can, uh, can I see your uh, day trading room. Mike, Mike, um, so please type it in the room so everybody can see it. So Mike, uh, uh, you're gonna receive an email today for in, with an invitation for the trading, for, uh, with an invitation for the trading room tomorrow. Uh, the email that you have received, uh, and because you're here, you obviously register for day one and day two uh, education. Uh, and uh, in the same email, you have a separate link to register for the live trading room tomorrow. Okay, so uh, when you get into the trading room tomorrow, I'm gonna be sharing what I'm trading, I'm gonna be showing you when I get in my trades, when, et cetera, you're gonna see the prices. Uh, okay, all right, so Neil, I'm really waiting for you guys. I'm very excited because I love trading, you know? I, the reality is that, you know, these webinars are just sucking the life out of me uh, because I, you know, after a long trading day from um, uh, basically I'm in front of the computer here uh, from eight o'clock until four o'clock or five o'clock and then I have to do the webinar. That's why I don't do these webinars so often and we try to do them quarterly because they're really time consuming and I put in a lot of effort for those because I'm so excited about the market and teaching traders how to trade. So. We spoke about YM and how choppy it was. Uh, um, okay, April, thank you. All right, so in YM, we took the trade, we executed trade on Monday because we had a breakout above the range and we had a multi-day range. We had the breakout above the range and initially we wanted to have a stop somewhere in here, somewhere in here into the 27. Uh, we were kind of eyeing the 26,700 level. Uh, so we took it right here into the 900, but then the market, guess what, took off and then in the afternoon trading session, decided to pull back. So we said, okay, that's fine. We're just going to, um, uh, we're just going to see what's going on here and uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to add one more lot, right? So we added one more lot here. We know, we knew that the market was sideways in a very, um, 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 in a very, it was so sideways. It it had the market has been sideways, guys, since last Thursday. Uh, so it was trading within the channel, but it was forcing the upper channel. So a lot of traders here were forcing shorts, right? And this is how they worked their shorts. But shorts were shortly lift. And then we added one more lot here. And then we uh, uh, we pretty much you know waited waited the overnight trading session. I updated, and by the way, we do have a private Twitter feed where we update a trade, where, where if we have ongoing, uh, ongoing futures trades, because the futures market is 24 seven, we set alerts and at 10 o'clock I do a little bit of a market, uh, a market wrap up. And, uh, I look at the market con context and 
if I see uh, if I see that we need to lift the stop or we we have a trading opportunity, that's the last time of the day when I look at charts 10 p.m. Eastern. I alert my members of my actions so they have their money work work for them. All right, so basically we out of here. We live through all this chop and slop, and then we exit it. Like I said, okay. So I'm very happy with the straight. So. The reality is that are you going to make money every single day? Uh, well, the answer is going to be no, right? The answer is going to be no. Trading is all about averaging out. Like I said, on Monday, we had a day trade. We stopped out of the day trade, and but we were still into uh, the swing trade. You see that I'm not over trading. Guys, I'm not over trading. I'm taking one trade a day. So taking it easy is the way to go and having maximum focus on your entry. So trading is about averaging out. It's about having big wins, small wins, break-even trades, and small losses. So staying focused uh, uh, is one of the basic things and how you can achieve, uh, achieve these results. Uh, I'm only watching six charts. You guys are going to see my six charts into tomorrow's trading session. But basically, I'm only watching the four indices. That's all there is because for gold and for, uh, for, gold and for oil, I'm looking at a swing trading basis. Now, remember that oil looks a little bit toppy here and may want to lift a little bit higher. It just has been coiling around that $1,500 level. Remember, there's going to be a huge volatility tomorrow in the market. Huge. Okay, because of that ECB. Uh, apply discipline. Discipline is the best thing that you could do for your trading. Don't over trade. Patience. I only take one to three trades a day. I apply my rules. I apply strict morning and daily routine. Um, I apply my trading plan, which is mapping out my trades and decisions before the New York trading session opens and my traders can see them ahead of time. And uh, to me, trading is not a game. It is really hard work. It is the, the hardest thing that you're ever going to do in your life because if you decide to embark on this journey, remember you're, you're going to have very hard, very, very hard days. Uh, and uh, I remember when I went full retail uh, trade, uh, full retail trader, and uh, I, had, uh, I had a really nice three month uh, winning streak. And then all of a sudden I decided to subscribe to the service, which was called a new service. And uh, this new service would provide you with uh, uh, news trades. And I would act based on those trades. And I had, from that point on, I had like a three month losing streak. I lost everything that I made in my prior three months. No kidding. Uh, and I remember that, I, and I was doing it over and over again, you know, like, oh, okay. These new, because I was making a lot of money on some trades and then I was, uh, you know, I was dripping, dripping, dripping on some other trades. So I would make, let's say, uh, $5,000 on a trade. And then the next day I would lose like $1,500. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's nothing. And then on the next trade, I would lose another thousand on the next trade. I'll lose another 2000 and then my 5,000 would be gone. And then I would start to dip lower. So the reality is stop with whatever you're doing and focus just on price. Forget about all these uh, indicators and services that provide you, I don't know, a glimpse into the future. There's no such thing as a crystal ball, trust me. So trading is hard work. And even if you decide to embark with me today and let's say you want to join, uh, you want to join my class uh, that opens up next week. Uh, remember you're going to go through a process and you're going to have your training wheels with me. I have traders that have been with me since the inception of the program in 2000, uh, actually in 2016 and are with me today because they love to have that company when they're trading, but they know how to trade on their own. So again, your repetition is key. Okay, so uh, the other thing, the indicators that I use, there is a question in here, Lynn, can you please get into the indicators? Okay, so here it, here's what I'm using. I'm using simple moving averages, the 20, the 50, and the 200. This is just to get you a little bit prepped for tomorrow's trading session. And I also use an exponential, uh, move, an exponential uh, moving average, which is the 10 exponential moving average. I use these moving averages on all my time frames. Obviously, I use volume, and guess what? Surprise, I use price action as my guide. The dotted lines that you sometimes saw on my charts and you're gonna see my trading screen tomorrow. So tomorrow when you log in, you're gonna see this, okay? And then I'm gonna drag some other charts. Uh, so uh, you, we could have like a bigger chart of the same symbol and analyze the heck out of it, okay? To try to get a diligent uh, decision on it. But uh, uh, the dotted lines are pivot points, okay? 
Uh, and this is what I use. This is all I use. Okay. So uh, like I said, I'm going to repeat it again. In the morning, we're going to focus on the one inch minute and from 10 o'clock, uh, from 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock, five minute. And from two o'clock, uh, going into, uh, uh, going into four o'clock, we're going to be using the five minutes throughout the lunch period. I'm zooming out to the 15 minutes. Guys, if you want the keys to the kingdom, be your own boss. You, you will, uh, that will unlock any chart on any time frame and any instrument, whether you want to trade Forex or stocks or options or cryptocurrencies, day or swing trading or active investing, you need to learn how to do it yourself. Uh, you need to know how to trade, how to read price, to have confidence. So you can be joining a plethora. And that's one of the reasons a lot of traders join a trading room. And then they join it for a month or two or three, and then they decide, nah, I don't like it. I'm going to jump into another room. You're going to find yourself for a few years that you have lost a, a, a lot of time just browsing around. Uh, trust me, you're not, you can learn, you can learn from any kind of trading room, but you're going to learn someone else's plan. I offer, I offer traders not only a service, the majority of companies that are there are just offering a service. That's because they spit out trades. They're using some indicators and they pop it on the screen. I don't. I use pure price action in my brain. And I educate you how to use yours, okay? So most people think they can do trading on their own. They can become good at it on their own, can excel on their own. How many great sports people have not had coaching? Guys, you need to have a coach. You need to have a mentor that is going to walk you through and be on your side. The problem is that with big retail, some of them are brick and mortar companies that are out there, trading companies, they're into marketing and they want to sell you. You're just an account and you're just, uh, you're just an invoice number for them. They want to sell you the class. You either get the class, you register for the class, you never hear from them again, okay? And then you basically have access to a recording or even if you take the live class, you're done. You never get repeats, you never get to interact with the person that is teaching. Or worst of all, which is a company that offers you huge and has huge amounts, and I'm talking about $15,000 for a class, and I have traders, I actually have a lot of traders that are coming from that big company. They also have brick and mortar. They also have online. Uh, and they come to me and after they have paid $15,000 or $25,000 uh, and they come and take my class and say, hey, I don't know if I'm going to take your class. I did this and that. I paid like 25. If you pay $25,000, it doesn't mean that you get the proper, uh, the proper education. They're selling you the class and they could care less if you're successful at trading or not because they are not live trading. They are an education company, that's it. And they have no idea how to day trade or swing trade or how to apply their principles. They just love to read slides just like I have read this slide for you right now. If you're really set up and if you wanna start trading with me, if you wanna change your future, if you wanna have a really great recession proof job, you can start trading the day trading futures class. You can adapt it to futures. You can adapt it to day trading stocks. The, you are going to learn the most powerful day trading chart patterns and how to exploit them for above average gains. So this is not micromanaging in trades. This is exactly going for the bigger targets, exactly how I do it every single day in the trading room. Some days I trade, some days I don't. But how this is consistency. Look through my portfolio. I'm going to teach you the safe major disciplines at every trade, how to calculate, because this is all about calculation. Um, this is about entries. This is about stops. This is about targets. Uh, this is about trade management. This is about position management. And this is about trailing. Uh, pre, it's not, it's not that. <laughs> it's not that. It's, it's a different one. I'm not going to name it right here, but it's a different company. Uh, but that too, okay? I'm going to teach you the market tempo because the market moves in a, sec uh, it, 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 in a certain tempo. You know, it goes up in the morning from a certain time. From a certain time, it comes down, it pulls back. And then you have to take a diligent decision about the price action in the morning when, when basically you're getting a confirmation of your lows that are set in, lows in place, and then it takes off or it breaks that. So there's a certain market tempo. You need to learn that. 
how to maximize the, your timing using key moving averages and other powerful indicators, how to maximize your gains and minimize your losses using proper management techniques. I'm going to teach you market timing, precise timing, when to act, when to buy, when to sell. Uh, precise locations, like I said, depending on those uh, uh, areas that I'm going to be uh, sharing with you, buy areas, target areas. Uh, also, the most complete technical analysis uh, uh, course that you will ever find. We have a chapter. It is one day dedicated, about three hours to technical analysis, teaching you everything about technical analysis and so much more. Uh, shoot me an email at info at tradeoutloud.com. More than happy to provide you with a class curriculum, but only if you're serious about trading and joining the class, okay? Uh, also included with the class, you have the on-demand recording. You have the manual, over 400 pages. You get the platform layout. You get the workstation initiation. You get the risk chart, and you get unlimited live retakes with me. And not only that, but guys, you're going, okay? You're going to have unlimited access to me. You have a trading question. Guess what? You have me. There is no company, no big company out there that is going to provide that because they're into marketing. They want to sell you the class, your number on the invoice, and then out the door next, out the door next, out the door next. I don't care about that. I care about you succeeding. And that's why I'm running the training room because I could have just sold classes. Trust me, I'm, people flock to me just for classes. So I could just sell classes and I'm fine. I could just shut down the trading room, but I love trading and I want to share my trades with my traders. And I put my mouth where my, and I put my money where my mouth is. So uh, these are some of the reviews that we're getting. These are verified orders from the students that actually took the class, not some baloney. So uh, look at this trader. He's saying the trading room rocks. Before I joined the trail, trading room, I blew up my account twice. Since joining the trading room, I have developed the patience and discipline to wait for the high odds trades, even if this means waiting until the end of the day and not trading, taking a trade. For the first time in my trading career, I have been consistent and pulling money out of the market. And this is on, in May. Okay. Another trader, you're so serious about trading. Uh, then you need uh, someone with experience and discipline to guide you and mentor you. Uh, ever since I joined, my trading has matured to the next level, and I'm learning something every single day by being in the room. Jose from Texas. I love Jose. He's so sweet. Uh, he's actually working on his MBA right now, so he took a little bit of height from, uh, uh, from trading, so he's going to be back in the fall. So an artist at Futures Trading, excellent, superior, and extraordinary. These are all individuals that you are going to find in my trading room tomorrow. So excellent, superior, and extraordinary. That has been my experience in the Trade Out Loud trading room. It has, uh, it, uh, it's been said that trading is more art than science. Uh, if that's the case, then uh, Anka is the Picasso of Futures Trading. Her method of reading charts and price action volume and a few moving averages is phenomenal. She walks you through each trade. And if you get into a trade on your own, as I have, that turns against you, she will quickly guide you on getting out the most profitable way, which she did. So you're in a trade. You're in trouble. You don't know what to do. I'm jumping in. I'm trying to help you out to try to manage the trade. If I could advise anyone starting out, this would be the class in the room, okay? And then again, a lot, lots. We have, as you can see, we have excellent reviews. Only five star reviews, five star reviews on the line. Thank you, April. We have this class coming up September 16th through the 20th. We have a full education, uh, and we're also offering you 30 days in the live trading lab. But guess what? We have one more. We have actually uh, one more session. Uh, on September 23rd that uh, we forgot to type in here that it's going to be implementation session, okay? It's also stated in the email. It's going to be an impl implementation session. It's going to be a separate lab. Uh, and uh, so that is basically you get six days of education, 30 days of live trading with me, and the tuition is 4995 Price is going to go up very soon to 6995 And I'm talking very soon. Installments are still available. If you want to sign up, please 
uh, email us at infoitradeoutloud.com. We're going to be sending you all the class information, the class curriculum. If you want to pay through installments, uh, the dates, et cetera, et cetera. And if you decide to reply back to us, that's fine. And then you're going to be joining the class. We're never going to reach out to you uh, again. Okay, so I, I think it sounds pretty fair. So this is all for tonight, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you tomorrow in the trading room. Very excited about tomorrow. Uh, nine o'clock, remember, log in earlier than nine o'clock. At nine o'clock, I start. I'm not gonna take any questions in the first uh, uh, hour, uh, hour, hour and a half or two hours. So uh, keep that in mind because I'm 100% focused. I wanna make money and I'm focused on making money in the morning and not chatting, but I'm all into chatting. Uh, after 11:30 or after we're out of the uh, out of the class, uh, the class is live online. Daniel, uh, live online. You could uh, you could actually view the class from anywhere in the world. Uh, the trading room is $299 per month. Uh, Ted. <laughs> Free. Okay. Oh, diamond. <laughs> of course Lynn you can sign up uh, see if you like it tomorrow see if this would be a good fit for you tomorrow and you can take the decision tomorrow so you don't have to rush just watch me trade tomorrow watch me how I navigate the markets and then if you want to sign up for the room that's fine I don't want to rush you guys into anything I want to put everything that I offer on the table I just uh, have the day one and day two offer you a little bit of glimpse of how I do things, of how I run uh, run things. And again, this didn't even, it, this is a tip from the iceberg. So there's so much content that I'm sharing in these classes is just uh, incredible. Uh, the course is for day trading only, but Lou, that's a great question because if you have, uh, if you sign up for this class, we're gonna provide you with the recording from the swing trading class as a bonus. And this is if you sign up, uh, if you sign up at the end of the uh, until the end of the day tomorrow. <clears throat> so uh, we're providing you the swing trading class uh, for futures, free of cost. And that is another $4,995. But we're providing that for free, just, just, for, this, uh, just for this class. And it's the recording, and actually uh, we're gonna live swing trade in the room. And if you have any questions, uh, we're going to uh, answer all your questions then. Alrighty. Uh, is Ninja Trader good enough of a platform to be perfect? Daniel, have a lot of traders trading on Ninja Trader is a very robust platform, very fast. I have not seen traders having issues with Ninja Trader. In all honesty, I had some issues last week and the week before, and even this week a little bit. April knows she even had some issues this week with the Thinkorswim platform. So um, uh, very reliable Ninja Trader. I have not had any members complain about Ninja Trader. Uh, in the trading room. And I do have some, but hey, you know what, guys, you're coming in the trading room tomorrow. Please ask as many questions. Uh, not only, don't only ask, uh, um, uh, ask me questions, but address questions to the traders that are in the room. Ask them, are they happy? Are they, are they making money? So whatever your questions are. Um, I, Bruce, here's the thing. With TradeStation, I think it's a little bit of a learning curve until you get used to the charts. But what I want in day tr in, with TradeStation is to open an account because I like the fee structure and I want to be able to trade, uh, to, to execute the trades uh, on the TradeStation platform, but still have my fingers spent for charting. I think that's an honest answer. Um, Shaw. If I know uh, 362 for round trip, well, then maybe you want to look into, uh, maybe you want to look into trade station. It's a dollar and a half per side. Michael, you use Ninja, never had a problem. I'm telling you, they, uh, you know, some traders in my trading room are using Ninja, they never had an issue. I had some issues uh, earlier this year when we had a little bit of volatility at the beginning of the year. And um, uh, the think or swim price would not, you know, like I, I had no idea where the price is because it was jumping around, it was stalling. And I had to ask my members where the price was. They include uh, all the fees. Okay. All right, Shaw, that sounds good. 
Uh, P.S. You would have to, uh, I'm going to provide you with the contact information. In fact, it was sent last night in the email, but I'm going to send it again and, uh, in, uh, uh, tonight, uh, after when you, when you're going to receive the recording, uh, I'm going to include that information. Just get in touch with them. Just shoot them an email and I'm going to send you the contact information. All right. Any other questions, guys? Are there any other questions that I haven't answered? Please type in. I can't believe we did another two hour tonight. <laughs> we did another two hour. Uh, yes, the trading room access tomorrow is from nine o'clock till 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, nine o'clock. Yeah, 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. And I take a break from 12 o'clock to two o'clock. <laughs> DDD. Yeah, I did it. Congratulations. Thank you. So thanks so much, guys. Thank you for coming here and spending, uh, spending a good two hours with me tonight. Um, thank you, April. Thank you so much. Thank you, Venkat, Yoda, Alex. Another two hours. Great info. Great. Appreciate it. All right. Learn. Awesome. Love it. Love it when you guys are loving it and learning new stuff and be prepared to learn some more tomorrow as we're putting everything into practice. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Bree. Okay, guys, I will see you tomorrow uh, morning at nine o'clock sharp in the trading room um, and uh, have a good rest and be prepared for tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, the recording will be sent uh, a little bit later on tonight. So thank you for attending. Have a great night, everyone. See you tomorrow.